good morning friends and my dear students as within few days your exam will going to start and you must be preparing for the practical as well as the theory exam in the practical exam the first question that the student get that is the spotting so i will covering in this video a uh, few of the spots and also along with the spots i will tell you what could be the side question that can you uh, that you will get in the exam in the practical as well as in the grand viva and i will give you the side questions but uh, not able to cover all the topic in this small video so if you have any doubt regarding uh, what we need if you are not able to understand what should be the answer for that question you can ask me in the comment section also so let's start without wasting time so now the first spot now you can see what could be this media you can see this is a play there is a some media pale color media is this So this one is nutrient agar. Now the first question that is being asked among this nutrient agar that is uh, first you have to identify then what type of media it is. So it is a basal media. That means this media has the basal basic things which is needed by all the bacteria to grow. So this is a basal media. Now they can be asked uh, another side question that what are the uses of the nutrient agar. So first uses first uses that you can identify whether the bacteria is fastidious or non fastidious if the uh, if the bacteria is able to grow on this media that means the bacteria is non fastidious now another question could be there that uh, another use that that is to identify the pigmentation of any bacteria so what can be the other question like if you are facing this plate in the grand viva so they can ask what are the different pigments producing bacteria like you have the staphylococcus which produce the yellow pigment golden yellow pigment then there is pseudomonas that also produce the pigment what are the different pigment produced by pseudomonas that is the pyoverdin pyorubin pyomelanin so that that is the way how the grand viva proceeds in the spotting usually we have you have to identify and what is the use of this media you have to identify and what is the uh, type of media it is so that you can so one use i have told you whether it is a that you will able to know that the bacteria is fastidious non fastidious you can identify the pigment when you are putting the ast testing that is antimicrobial susceptibility testing so the colonies which you take that has to be taken from the nutrient agar so for ast testing then if you want to go for any biochemical testing to identify the bacteria so that also you can take from the this plate colonies then if you want to do serotyping so that you have to do any biochemical test like oxidase testing uh, catalase testing every test you have to do from the nutrient agar plate only and also this media is being used for preparing the other media because this is the first thing which we have to prepare now like we want to make blood agar so you will add blood into that if you want to chocolate agar then you have to lyse the rbc so this is these are the different uses of the nutrient agar and another thing uh, what is the solidifying agent in this that is the agar 1.5 to 2% is being added so in the grand viva you can be they can be asked what is the definition of basal media what is the classification of media uh, like you can say about the solid semi solid liquid media uh, then different type of media they can ask related to media so the most important topic in the grand viva are the medias so that uh, topic on the medias what is the classification different type of media different definitions constituents so everything is very important that should be covered in the practical as well as for the grand viva so now there is another spot you can see so this is as you must have identified this is mcconkey agar it is a type of selective media mild selective it is differential media differentiating between the lactose fermenting and the non lactose fermenting as you can see lactose fermenting are pink colored colonies and non lactose fermenting are pale colored colonies and it is also indicator media so what is the uh, this indicator present in this that is the neutral red which is a frequent question and uh, use differentiating between the two type of colonies lactose fermenting they can ask the question what are the lactose fermenting bacteria like you have e coli escherichia coli klebsiella is there then you have cytobacter enterobacter then non lactose fermenting salmonella shigella so then if it is a grand viva going on this uh, media plate 
so they can ask how the media is being sterilized that is any media played though their sterilization method is by autoclave then they can ask about this when you, they are if you are giving the answer of escherichia coli klebsiella so they can go into the viva of those particular bacteria so this is how the grand viva progress now one of the important point is that when we see meconchiaga usually we are able to identify but sometimes there can be confusion between the blood agar and the meconchi although the blood agar is a deep red color and easy to identify but sometimes the color can be very much similar of these two plates so there is a trick that is you have to hold this plate in your hand and you have to see it through the media so usually the meconchi agar is a transparent media you can see through this plate whereas in case of blood agar because there are intact rbcs are there so you, this is not a transparent media so that is how you can differentiate between the two medias now uh, we proceed to another spot that is so you can see this plate easily uh, easy to identify this is blood agar now this blood agar it is what type of media it is so it is a enrich media now the definition can be asked about the enrich media that means some nutrients has been more nutrients has been added so that to support the growth of certain special bacteria now what are those special bacteria that are the fastidious bacteria fastidious means now they can ask what is fastidious what is non fastidious fastidious means they need something extra whereas the non fastidious are able to grow on the basal media so like we have discussed in the previous slide about the nutrient agar or the basal media that means that is a basic requirement which is needed by all the bacteria that has been provided in that plate so if the bacteria is not able to grow in that media it needs something extra so that is provided by these enriched medias like we have added in this 5% sheep blood so this is the most common blood which usually being added in the blood agar 5% sheep blood is being added at the temperature of 45 degree centigrade now what other bloods can be added if you as it is easy to get sheep blood so therefore that is the most preferred blood which is being added to make the blood agar you have other options also like if you are having horse blood if you are having rabbit blood so you can use the other options also but each media has some advantage some disadvantage so that is not for your level now uh, if there are no animal house so from where we can get to make this blood agar so we can also have the human blood so nobody will donate uh, his blood to make this media so from where we can get that blood that is the expired blood bags which is of no use so that can be used in the blood agar but there are some many disadvantage of using the human blood expired human blood for making this media that is basically many antibiotics must have been taken must be present in that blood that will impair the growth of the uh, many bacteria now uh, if we talk about of use of blood agar so use is that first of all it will support the growth of fastidious organisms so what are those fastidious organisms they can ask the question on that so fastidious is the streptococcus there are other hemophilus uh, so uh, many times uh, when i have taken the viva usually the students uh, they say staphylococcus staphylococcus is not a fastidious organism it can grow on the nutrient agar so if you are saying staphylococcus uh, that can be useful when we are seeing for the hemolytic property hemolytic property uh, is a type of you can say if it is showing the hemolysis that shows that the bacteria is a pathogenic bacteria pathogenic means that the bacteria is causing the disease there are many strains which are not causing the disease so we say it is a non pathogenic strain so to check that property you can use uh, so the one is one use is the fastidious and second use is to check the hemolytic properties now we come so this slide i have added so that because when they when you will say that it is used for demonstrating the hemolytic property of the organism you will quote the uh, this example of streptococcus so from there the viva can shift to the streptococcus they can ask uh, difference between the staphylococcus streptococcus they can ask what are the different type of hemolysis shown by the streptococcus so one is the alpha hemolysis beta and gamma alpha hemolysis only it is a partial hemolysis 
so there is a partial uh, partial hemolysis that means you will see only the greenish discoloration the plate color will change instead of red it will become green at the site of the colonies and it is shown by the uh, that is the streptococcus pneumoniae so streptococcus pneumoniae and the viridans group like streptococcus mutans mitis so they all give alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis is the main uh, main bacteria which we usually read in the streptococcus that is the streptococcus pyogenes like you have to tell the whole classification uh, that is uh, group a group b so this come all come in the beta hemolysis so properly read it from the book that whole classification comes in the theory question as well as in the practical and in the grand viva so that uh, and then the third is the gamma hemolysis that means it is not showing no hemolysis so they have used the term gamma hemolysis usually it is for the enterococcus uh, uh, which is not now in the streptococcus family it is now a different family enterococcus so that is shown by the enterococcus so alpha and beta hemolysis now we come to the third spot that is the another spot so this you can see you easily can identify that is the color of this plate that is it's a chocolate agar now the chocolate agar is also prepared in the similar manner like the blood agar but the temperature of the blood is important that it is being prepared by adding the blood at 70 degree centigrade what type of media it is that it is also enrich media then for uh, like they will ask the use so for what bacteria you can use this plate specifically because usually most of the fastidious organism grow on blood agar and whenever we processing any sample in the bacteriology lab we choose one blood agar and one mekonkey agar so all the organism can grow on blood agar and mekonkey agar will help in identifying if it is a gram negative bacteria whether the bacteria is lactose fermenting or non lactose fermenting chocolate agar specifically we need for the hemophilus influenzae so this hemophilus influenzae it needs a special growth factor that is factor x and v that is present in the rbcs but if this rbc are being lyse then it will release these factors in the media and the bacteria will able to grow one thing more can be asked in this chocolate agar like when you will say about the hemophilus influenzae so they can go in depth for the hemophilus influenza so be prepared for that topic also an important short note uh, or you can say important grand viva question that is the settlism that is shown by the hemophilus influenza now what is the settlism in settlism that is uh, like you are growing we want to grow hemophilus influenza on the blood agar so in the center the streaking of the staphylococcus aureus is being done and staph has the property of hemolysis so it will lyse the rbc surrounding its colonies and release the factor x and v so the sample which you have inoculated surrounding the staph colonies so there will be bigger colonies of the hemophilus influenzae if it is present in the sample and that as far as it goes away from the staph colonies it will become the smaller colonies so that is the settlism that is very important viva question along with this chocolate agar now the next plate next sample is the that you can see it is the loffler serum slope lss so this loffler serum slope that is being a sub optimal media it is being used for the uh, uh, you can say for the bacteria cornebacterium diphtheriae this cornebacterium diphtheriae cause what disease that is the diphtheria that is in hindi we used to say it's a gal ghotu so Uh, exudate is being formed uh, over the tongue and that can cause the obstruction in the breathing and usually it is affecting mainly the child group and the uh, person can come in the emergency also now uh, what can be the side question that is what uh, that is for which bacteria it is being used then what will be the sample so usually it is the exudates over that area and the or a pharyngeal swab is there then uh, what is the other method uh, by which we can diagnose cornea bacterium diphtheriae that is the staining method that is the albert staining so they can ask about that what is the treatment what is the special media used for uh, this cornea bacterium diphtheriae that is the potassium telluride agar so uh, like ways 
the uh, question attached to this um, spots can be asked so now the next spot you can easily identify this is the lawrence jensen median which is basically be used for the mycobacterium tuberculosis growth used for uh, when you are diagnosing tuberculosis disease the important question attached to this that which is the uh, agent used for solidifying because in most of the media it is the agar but here it is the x hence x has been used as a solidifying agent as we are using x so we cannot autoclave so this is very important side question that what how you can sterilize this media that is basically by the incipator we that is uh, usually in autoclave we go for the temperature 121 degree centigrade in incipation uh, it is being sterilized at 85 degree centigrade so uh, why why uh, we cannot autoclave it because uh, the x which we are using it is having the protein and protein get denatured at such a high temperature so therefore you have to go for the different method of sterilization now what are the constituent of this media that is basically the malachite green hence egg then glycerol, glycerol is there so this malachite green acts as antiseptic also it gives the this green color so it is very easy to identify uh, this colonies of the tb bacteria which usually is buff color buff means it's a cream color so uh, because the if the media's color is also buff and the colonies are also buff color so very difficult to distinguish so therefore the media should be of different color and the colony should be of different color what type of colonies we get that is the rough buff and tough then there can be many questions uh, what are the other things which can have this uh, acid fire stain structures then they can uh, they can ask anything from the tuberculosis uh, they can ask from this mycobacterium tuberculosis what are the other medias which is being used so middle book middle book 7h9 10 11 12 10 11 are the solid medias 9 and 12 are the liquid medias other medias like uh, some are blood based tarsis potato based paulaskis you can also use this dorset tag you can also go for that media to grow this bacteria now the most disadvantage of this media that is uh, because it take a very long time to grow this bacteria that is six to eight weeks so it is uh, for you have to wait for, for such a long time now another question that is being asked by one of my students uh, that is why we are using this special bottles are there uh, we are not pouring in the usual uh, plates uh, which we have used for nutrient agar, blood agar, chocolate agar. So basically, because we have to keep this uh, media for eight weeks, usually in all the other medias, we are keeping it only for 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours maximum. So uh, when you are keeping for two months, so the media will dry out. So the surface area which is being, and uh, in these, we have the screw cap cups, uh, these screw ca caps are there. So you can easily tight it. Uh, whereas in that plates you have a large surface area so media can easily dry out also uh, these are the small bottles so they take a very little space in the incubator so you can uh, put many samples in the incubator so that is being uh, the questions then they can ask uh, what is the most common samples we get for the tuberculosis disease that is the sputum what is the most common tuberculosis? Permanent tuberculosis, 80%. What is the most common extra pulmonary tuberculosis? That is of lymph nodes. And what can be the different samples you can get? You can have the urine sample. You have any fluid. Your uh, like if the cytis is there, you can have the cytic tapping. You can have uh, synovial fluid. You can have CSF. It is TB meningitis. So lots and lots of questions can come from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a very important topic either for the theory, for the practical, for spotting, for grand viva. So you have to go through the whole because they can ask the latest diagnostic method also in the grand viva if this LG media is kept there. So you have to tell everything about the back tech, CBNA, TrueNAT. So everything you have to keep in the mind. So uh, that's all. Yeah, I think this topic must be very, uh, you must like this topic because all these questions will be asked in your exam and it will be very helpful to kindly uh, share it with your friends i'm not asking you to subscribe my channel anything but share it with your friends might be it will help many of the students who need this at the exam time
thank you if you have any doubts you can ask me that in the comment section i will surely answer it thank you